And welcome to the midday here from the Local 4 digital set inside the newsroom at the WDIV compound on Lafayette in downtown Detroit. As if you didn't know, meteorologist Brandon Rue, seated to my left, screen right, Hello. has taken time out of his busy schedule and he is a busy man with this hurricane lurking off the east coast of Florida. Uh, Dorian came to a day-long halt over the northwest Bahamas causing damage and immense flooding. There were walls of water reaching the second floors of buildings. People were hanging out in the attic, getting away from the water in the attic. Uh, the airport there, Grand Bahama, was reported at one point to be under six feet of water. Uh, five people killed, 21 injured. The storm is now down to a Category 2, Brandon. Um, hundreds of thousands in Florida, Georgia, and South Carolina ordered to evacuate. Uh, what is the very latest? The 11 o'clock update from the hurricane hunters, the reconnaissance flights that fly in and around these storms every few hours. So Category 2 which makes sense. A lot of times the friction of land will use up a lot of energy. energy. Right, and so it has been sitting on top of the Bahamas, not a huge area of land, but over the last two days it has been. So makes sense that it has downgraded. It's barely on the move, two miles an hour it's moving, that giant storm. It is uh, starting to see an increase in size, not strength. So the rain bands and the hurricane force or tropical storm force winds will be out into the or have been out into the coast of Florida uh, but uh, category two storm means that uh, winds are about 110 miles an hour which puts it barely into category two it could once it's fully over the open waters of the Atlantic upgrade to a cat three again but the model data suggests it stays as a category two storm and we're looking at hurricane force winds 60 miles out from the center of the storm so is there any statistical chance that it could do something unexpected or is it virtually guaranteed like 99.9% .9 that it's gonna follow that path that we keep seeing this one right here. Yeah, I don't know about percentages, but there's always a chance that it will buck the trend, the models. But if you've watched hurricane coverage over the last few years, the hurricane models do a pretty good job uh, at where it's going, how strong it will be, and the Bermuda high that steers it coming to fruition, a couple of frontal boundaries across the United States that will steer it again a little bit away from shore but certainly there is the possibility that it does hit land uh, in Florida or South Carolina something like that right now it looks to be just barely skirting the coasts of okay. Florida at Georgia South Carolina and the eye itself the eye wall has to actually touch the mainland and for it to be considered having made landfall right right and that could be any obscure spot from you know, the Jacksonville area up into the outer banks of North Carolina. As soon as that eye wall hits land, it officially has made landfall and not before that. So I think what we're looking at really devastating in the Bahamas, and we don't even know the half of it yet because it's been sitting on top of Freeport. It's been probably uh, knocking out power and the ability to get information, send information. Video I saw on, on Twitter specifically showed just cars, like a tree here, a tree there, but just nothing but cars. The structures those cars have been parked around were all flattened. Right, and you know, the problem with the Bahamas, unlike some other tropical areas, they don't have the highlands to go seek shelter in most of these areas, very, very flat. They have nowhere to go and it is massively devastating there so we wait to find out sort of the the wrath of this storm once it leaves but then we're going to be left without power uh, hurricane maria in puerto rico a couple of years ago really it was power outages that began to cause the most residual problems so we'll hope and pray but i think what we're looking at is our friends and family over the next 24 hours in florida will be dealing with 60 to 80 mile an hour winds um, so not really getting those 110, 120 being far enough from the center of it. If it shifts farther west or hits land, I mean, that, that will cause a whole other set of problems. But you are right to be concerned about your family and friends on the east coast or the Atlantic coast of Florida from just north of Miami all the way up through Jacksonville. And then it continues, but 
that area will get those 60 to 80 mile an hour winds and that will happen for several hours and we'll get big problems because of that but again the latest as of 11 a.m. that it stays a cat two and rides the coastline all right several florida airports have shut down operations 1500 flights canceled more than 85 shelters are open statewide in florida alone and the president has approved emergency declarations for florida south carolina and georgia and the governors of north carolina and virginia have also declared states of emergency brian have we used up all three elements of the video that we uh, have at the bottom here or do we have something we haven't seen yet well, Jason, the storm surge will, as, as we look through our archives, but the storm surge, you hear that, what is that? That is that crazy rise in, in sea level, uh, basically crashing onto land. And we're talking about a 15 foot storm surge still in parts of Florida. And that will be the bigger story, well, I think, than the wind. And Miami, uh, I'm sorry, Brandon, were you were gonna say something? About these elements? Oh yeah, uh, about the videos. Um, I showed this video, which shows flooding at yeah. the airport in the Bahamas. Oof. That's the airport, man. Yeah. Um, we've got these satellite images of uh, of the hurricane. Just churning and churning and, and churning. growing in size, regardless yeah. of its strength. Uh, growing in size, not good either, because that will bring repeated rain bands and the possibility of, of tornadoes, things like that, to Florida, Georgia, South Carolina. And then inside the eye, we have that? Yeah, we have this footage. This was uh, making the rounds online. From the stadium, the, hurricane hurricane the stadium effect, the Coliseum effect of being actually inside the eye when everything around the circumference is just raging uh, nature. Is there audio there? I can't hear. Uh, no, let's see. Curious how much sound because you know they are just. No, I've got no audio in this video. Right, the calm of that hurricane eye. Whether or not I'm sure they can hear, but the once you get into that eye wall, mm -hmm. game changer. I mean, it, you, you go from just that blue sky and calm right. to a freight train sound of those winds. And currently, and I think when that video was taken, we were probably looking at. 140 mile an hour winds on that eye Not wall. 225. No, but not also what it's down to now, about 110. Not that that's a ton better, but... Uh, well, and it's like you and I were talking about. It's, it, it's the residual effects. It's not necessarily that people died because a structure fell on them or a tree fell on them or right. they drowned. It's they have a pre-existing medical condition and then the hurricane leaves and now it's just devastation and, and there's no power, there's they no medical supplies. No way to get anywhere. No way to get anywhere, they're isolated. And so, you know, somebody that has needs life-saving medications is suddenly in grave danger of losing their lives. Exactly, and I think we're going to see that a lot in the Bahamas, especially. Uh, again, I don't want to hit the panic button for Florida. 60 to 80 mile an hour winds likely uh, up and down the coast of Florida for repeated hours, that could and will cause damage, but in much better shape than, you know, the folks in the Bahamas, even Puerto Rico before that with Dorian. Well, I mean, if there is any slice of good news about this, it is that this, the track, the forecast track that has it going up the coast, just kind of bouncing along the, the southern east coast of uh, the United States, at least it's not a, uh, direct hit that goes right across West Palm, Miami, and Tampa ends up over in the panhandle toward New Orleans after regenerating in the Gulf, right? Which happens a lot and still could happen with this storm, but not very likely. Jason has family over in the, the panhandle, right? So yeah. you're thinking about that. You've seen there uh, what can happen from storms that not only strengthen in the Gulf, but ones that come across the Atlantic, lose a little steam, Maybe it's down to a tropical storm, Cat 1, as it hits the Gulf waters, which are warmer yeah. uh, than most ocean waters and can refuel that system. Uh, there is a storm right now, not named, but in the Gulf that likely will become a tropical storm, which would be Fernand, Fernand. Uh, that would be the next one. There's also an even stronger hurricane out over the Pacific, Juliet or Julieta, 130 mile an hour winds from that, but it's out in the middle of nothing. Uh, so not a lot of attention on that. I, I think that we should take stock 
in the forecast track uh, that has been coming out and yep. uh, not necessarily saying you don't have to worry about your family, right. but I think it's a pretty good trajectory of this right here and f just far enough offshore as a category two to where those winds onshore uh, won't be as impactful. Instead of 110, you get 60 yeah. to 80. And you know what? You take that if you're a Floridian. All right, and well, we appreciate your time stopping by. And Brandon has to go get ready to do the noon news, which airs in 10 minutes right here on Local Ouch. 4. what and happened? We, Thanks, guys. Uh, invite you to continue to watch on air as well as online. And uh, Local 4 News at noon, as I said, coming up in 10 minutes. So tune in.